the next template we're going to build is called a photo stack base. The reason why it's called a photo stack base is we stack things on a photo that's the base. Anyway, you, you'll see what I mean. Uh, it starts with a photo that, that, that I call the base. We'll just open it up. Here it is. Here's our first photo. All right, we're going to stack photos on top of this and create kind of a, I don't really want to call it a collage because collage usually implies that they're blending together. They're not really blending together, but it is a, a collage of images. Uh, first thing we have to do is we have to make the background black and white. There's a number of different ways. We're going to go with the easy way. Uh, it doesn't create the most wonderful black and white image, but the black and white image here isn't the focus, so that's why we're going to go with this kind of quick and easy way. Go to the Layers Palette, and at the Layers Palette Adjustment Layer pop-up menu, choose Hue and Saturation. And it brings up the Hue and Saturation dialog box, as you have seen before. To get rid of the color, just go right here to the Saturation slider, drag it all the way to the left, and the color's gone. Okay, and that's kind of the easy, quick way to just get rid of the color. All right, now we're going to create a brand new layer above that. Just click the new layer icon right here. All right, and we're going to draw a uh, square. So let me move this out of the way. Just kind of we'll move it over here. I'm going to hold the Shift key, get the rectangular marquee tool. If you hold the Shift key, it becomes the square bu square rect or the the square selection tool. That's the word I was looking for. There it is, and we'll make a square selection, something like that. Okay, so we've made a square selection. Now, I need to fill that selection with black, so make sure your foreground color is black. Then press Option Delete or on PC Alt Backspace to fill uh, your, your selection with black. All right, and now you can deselect. This look familiar? Kind of like what we did in the last one? That's what I was talking about when I said the last one was kind of a building block that we keep building on. Well, here we go again. We filled it with black. We're going to go to the little... Um, the adjustment layer pop-up menu, or excuse me, the layer style pop-up menu, and choose stroke. So let's bring up the stroke dialog. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to choose uh, white as our foreground color. This time we'll make the stroke even thinner. We made it three last time, so let's make it like, I mean two last time, let's make it even thinner, one. And of course we'll choose inside so the corners are nice and sharp. Okay? I know this looks familiar. It looks like what we did last time, but this is just one part of it. Now, Let's go to the, not the opacity, but the fill. Lower the fill to zero so you have a see-through box. Okay? All right, now, now that we've done that, I'm going to kind of move the layers palette off the screen for just a second so we can kind of focus on what's going on here. This is where we're going to start stacking our photos right here. So, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go here and go under the File menu, under Open, and we'll open up a, uh, the first photo I want to stack. All right, here's an image right here. All we're going to do is select all, okay? Copy it, Command C or Control C, or do it the slow way. If you're getting paid by the hour, just choose Copy from the Edit menu. And so we have it copied into our, me our, our memory. Now, I'm going to bring the Layers palette back real quick. I'm going to hold the Command key on the Mac, the Control key on the PC, and click on the layer. When I click on it in the Layers palette, it puts a selection around the square. All right. Now, remember I have a photo in memory, right? I just opened up a photo, selected it, and copied it so it's in Photoshop's memory. Now, if I just go choose Paste, it's just going to paste that photo back in, right? That's no good. Let's hit Undo. But if instead, because I have a selection in place, I choose Paste Into, it will paste that photo in memory into that square. Watch. So it crops off the extra area. So I can kind of put it wherever I want. I can also resize it. I move this out of the way so you get a little clearer shot. To resize it, you just press Command T or on PC Control T, and it brings up the free transform handles. Kind of think of them as the resize handles. I'm going to hold a Shift key. If you hold a Shift key, it will resize proportionally. If not, it'll kind of just squash it. And basically, just kind of move this around to where it's where you like it. I'm going to remove the, take my hands off the Shift for just a second so I can kind of, all right. When I'm resizing, I'm holding Shift. When I'm moving it, I just take my hand off. Make it a little smaller. There we go, something like that. When you get it sized and cropped the way you like it, let's move it up just a little bit, there we go. Sized and cropped the way you like it, press return or enter to lock in your changes. Now here's the problem. Remember that white stroke we made? It's it, You can't see it because the photograph is covering it. So you can go to the layers palette and either drag that layer directly beneath it, just grab the layer, drag it beneath, or there's a keyboard shortcut you should learn. It'll save you a lot of time, especially since time is money when you're working in Photoshop and you're trying to get the job done. Here's a great keyboard shortcut. 
On Mac, hold the Command key. On PC, hold the Control key. And hit the left bracket key on your keyboard. Watch, the left bracket key, let me push this back up here. The left bracket key moves your current layer down one layer. Okay, so it was on top. I hit Command bracket and it moves it down. Or on PC, Control bracket. By the way, the bracket keys are to the, to the immediate right of the letter P. Okay, so the bracket keys, the left and right. So the right bracket key takes it up a level, a layer. The left bracket key takes it down a layer, and that's right next to the letter P. Okay, so we've built our first one. And actually, let me just, uh, I'm going to link these two together and move it over just a little bit. Oops, let's make sure we link the right ones together, shall we? All right, we want this linked with that. And also, if you want to move the mask too, click right in between there. It moves the whole thing. There we go. Move it over a little bit like that. Okay. Now we can unlink these if we need to. Okay. Now here's what we're going to do. <laughs> I just accidentally clicked off that. I need to duplicate just this layer. The quickest way to duplicate a layer is to press Command J or on PC Control J. It just instantly duplicates the layer, the box layer. Hold the Shift key and drag straight down and it just moves a copy of the box. It's a duplicate. I'm moving the duplicate layer straight down. The reason why I hold the shift key is by holding the shift key before I drag it makes it go straight exactly down. Okay, it won't move to the little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. It moves exactly straight down. Alright, now we open the second image. Let's go find the second image. Open it. Now it's easy. Alright, select all. Copy. All right, go over here, command click on the layer or on PC control click, and choose paste into. See, it really doesn't take long. Press command T or control T to bring up the free transfer hand handles so you can resize the photo. And then let's do a little bit of cropping here. There we go. What's nice to use these four too, if you have photos that they're okay, but maybe they're not going to wind up being big photos in the album, they're kind of throwaway photos, this is a great way to repurpose them. So we'll take this photo, we'll place it here. Remember the keyboard shortcut that moves it behind? Command left bracket. Boom, puts it right behind. All right, now click back on the box layer, duplicate the layer, Command J or on PC, Control J, hold the Shift key, drag straight down, and there's your copy. Okay? And then we'll open up the third photo. Let's go open the third photo. Uh, right there. Open it up. Do your little shortcut. Command A, select all. Command C, copy. Command W, close the window. See, little shortcuts there. And then we'll command click on this layer or on PC control click to load the selection and choose paste into. Okay, so basically do the same thing three times, then command left bracket to put it older. I know what you're saying. Why are you using all these commands? The quicker you can get it using these commands, the faster you'll work. If you have to do less clicks, I mean, your hands are already on the keyboard, the fastest way is to use these shortcuts. Let's bring up free transform again. We'll press command T or PC control key T. Resize the photo. Now, you may have noticed that the bride here is with a completely different man. Don't let that throw you. Okay. Let's not take our eye off the ball. <laughs> all right. So now we have our three the spacing isn't real great. It's a little tight here against the bottom. So let's do this. We're going to stretch this out a little bit. All right. I want them to all link together. So we're going to link this layer, that layer, this layer, that layer, this layer. We're going to move the whole group as one and that layer. And we're going to move their masks, the little layer masks that we pasted them into. One, two, three. Now we can grab the thing and just move it up a little bit. Okay. All right. So now they're kind of even. That one, there's a little, looks like you could use a little more space right here. So here's what we're going to do. Let's unlink it all. All right, we can just unlink them a little bit. There we go. And it's the bottom one, right? That looks bad, that one. Let's see which one. Right there. So let's link these two together and just nudge that down a little bit. Make sure you hold the shift key and you can nudge it down. All right, so now the spacing's pretty good. All right, so let's take a look. I want to move this thing out of the way. You can see where it's going. What you're doing here, you're using a basic principle of design. It's, it's the principle of contrast. The reason why you're making this photo black and white is so that these really, really, really show up. I mean, that's basically what you're doing. You're trying to make them stand out by basically doing that. Now, you could go and add a drop shadow to these if you really wanted to be kind of obnoxious about it. So if I'll show you how to do that just in case you, we want to. But I personally like it without the drop shadow. But and, and there's not many things I like without a drop shadow, but this happens to be one of them. Go choose drop shadow. And we'll see, it'll be on this one down here, okay, because 
uh, were, were the last the last one we created. Just leave the dialog box, grab the shadow, put it where you want it, soften it up a little bit by increasing the size, and then you have a drop shadow. Okay. Personally, I'm not too crazy about it, but it's your choice. If you like it, take the word drop shadow and drag it to the other layers. Drag it to this layer, and then scroll down and drag it to the photo of this uh, box layer again. So now you've got drop shadows on all three. Okay, again, totally up to you. I'm not that crazy about it, but you can decide. All right, we're not done yet. Let's move this out of the way. Let's go grab our type tool, switch our type to white, and we'll add a little line of type. We're using the font Zapfino, which is a nice little font, and we'll type in always and forever. And we'll position that type right here for our, our look. Okay, so that's the basic look right there. All right, that's our basic template. All right, now, don't save. Don't save yet. Here's what we have to do. All right, that's what it's going to look like when you're done. But before you save this as a template, we don't really need these photos in place. So here's what you're going to do. Before you save it, go here and get rid of the photos. Just go to the layer with a photo on it, drag it in the trash. Notice the box and the shadow stay. All right, scroll down, find the photo, trash it. Go down, find the photo, trash it. So what you have basically are three boxes with drop shadows. Now here's what you want to do. Before you save this file, I strongly recommend doing this next thing. You will pull your hair out later if you don't do this now. Go to the top layer. As you can see, the top layer is really, if you turn the little eyeball off, you can see that's the bottom layer. Okay, so go ahead and double click on this name and type in bottom. All right, go to the next layer. It is the middle layer. So just go ahead and type in middle. And then this one is the top layer. So go and type in middle. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Type in top. Now, that helps, but eh, go one step further. Take, make it easier on yourself, okay? Put the top layer up top, put the bottom layer on the bottom, okay? Now, also, you don't really probably need to see the drop shadow and the stroke anymore. You don't need to, because see how long it makes your, your layers palette? Tuck these things up. See the little flippy arrows there? Click, click, click. It just makes it nice and tidy. Okay, doesn't take away the stroke, doesn't take away the, it just kind of folds them up. If you ever need to see them again, just click and they all come back. All right, now, go back here, click on the background layer. Now you're ready to save the template. Let's go save it. We'll call this um, stack template. How's that? All right, so we close stack template and we save the file in Photoshop format with all its layers. And we close it. All right. So here we are, another week goes by. We've gone and taken the shots where it's the Johnson wing again. We'll open up our template. So let's go open up our brand new template. It's all ready to go for us, just waiting for us to add photos. We'll open up the first photo here. Let's just see. We'll open up the first photo. Uh, stack, uh, new stack, okay. Different people, hopefully. All right, hold the shift key and drag their photo over. Pops right into place. Boom, it's instantly and already in black and white. So you don't have to do any conversion or anything. It's ready to go. Now all you do is pick three other photos, copy and paste them in there, and you're done. Okay, now, see the words always, always and forever? Let's go ahead and deal with that now. If you think it's too big, we could take it down a little bit. Let's just click right here. See how when I click right on the letter T, my cursor changes to a little hand with two arrows? Those are called scrubby sliders. If you click and drag, you can resize your type. Okay, and then we'll just move it up a little bit. Now you can either move it up there or maybe reposition it down here. Let's see what it looks like down there. All right, not bad. I think I still like it up there. All right, but I had to make it a little smaller to fit. All right, and we'll go get three photos. Just for the sake of speed, I am going to go and get the same three photos we used before. So here's number one, and here's the keyboard shortcut. Command A, Command C, Command W. All right, that selects all, copies, and closes the window. So you go to the top one, paste into, and then size it. You see how fast this happens. This is how fast it'll be in your own studio. Press return or enter, and then command left bracket to put it behind. Click on the middle layer, go open the next image. We'll open up PhotoStack 2. So this is, these, you know, and theoretically will be different photos, of course. 
All right, go to the middle layer, command click, paste into, bring up free transform to size it. I know you know what the keyboard shortcut is by now, so I'm not going to keep saying it. All right, and send it behind. Lastly, so see how fast this is in real life when you're really doing it yourself. It moves very, very quickly. Select all, copy, close. Go to the, this layer, command click on it, and paste into and resize. So you can see that you can really crank it out. But we're going to, all right, we're going to make it even faster. Okay, so you're done. That's it. How long did it take me to put in those three photos? Drag the black and white photo over, resize the type you know, a minute, two minutes, something like that. Now, you you could go and save it at this point with a different name, but you'd have to flatten it and all that. I'm going to give you a little trick. This is a, little, a neat little way to speed things up because you know what? You see this template that we've got here? You may want to use this numerous times with different pictures. You may want to throw in the same wedding a different photo in the same three people and just move them to the other side. Move the type or don't have type on the next one and just move these over to the other side. So you can use this same basic template in a number of different ways. Okay, So let's say that this winds up in your wedding book three times with three different sets of photos. Here's what you do to speed, up some, to speed your work up. Watch what we're going to do. First we're going to go over and click on the very top layer and then I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to go into the window menu and go to actions. All right, the actions palette, what this basically does is it is a tape recorder inside of Photoshop that basically records everything that you do step by step. All right, we're going to create an action that does this. We're going to create an action that merges all these layers together on one separate layer. We're going to copy that layer into a brand new document. We're going to automatically flatten that layer, come back to this document, and throw the extra layer away. I know that sounds a little funky, but it'll all make sense in just a minute. And what's great about this is we're going to assign this to one key on your keyboard. So in the future, you'll be able to do all of this with just one keystroke. Okay, this will make sense in just a minute. Hang on. Here's what we're going to do. To create a new action, all you do is go choose from this little pop-up menu, surprisingly enough, new action. Okay, when it pulls up, when it comes up, we'll say make a flattened image. Okay, now that's let's come up with a better name. Uh, final image. How's that? All right, now, so that's the name. Here's the important part function key. You have to choose an F key on your keyboard. So let's go and choose what key is going to invoke this particular thing. How about F12? We're going to go Shift, Command, F12. Shift, Command, F12 on PC would be shift control F12 is going to invoke this action okay you notice it doesn't say okay it says record once I hit record it's going to start recording my steps as I go so here we go I'm going to hit record it's recording let's move this out of the way all right so here's what we're going to do step one is create a new layer it just recorded look if I bring the actions palette up see make layer it's recording my steps. All right, that's step one. Step two is we're going to hold the Option key or on PC the Alt key, and we're going to choose Merge Visible. What that's going to do, it's going to take all of the images, all the layers, and make one layer that's a flattened version of all of those images. So it doesn't really flatten the file, but it makes like almost a snapshot of flattened version. You can see it right there in the in the here. Let me zoom in a little so you can see. Let's zoom in. See, makes a flattened version of your image. Woo! Okay. Now, now that we've done that, we're going to go to the Layers menu and say Duplicate this layer. Now, I don't want to just make another copy of this layer. I actually want to duplicate this layer into a different destination. I want to create a brand new document with just that top layer right there. So click OK, and it's going to do that. Watch. It's going to create a brand new document. But I will not be able to save this as a JPEG or as a TIFF or anything because it is it doesn't have a background. It's not flattened. So at this point, it has no background layer. I want to flatten it. We're going to choose Flatten. All right, that's it. That's my finished document. That's the one that I use for proofing. That's the one I send to the client. That's the one I put up on the web. That's the one I want to do whatever with. But if I go back to my stack template, you'll see I have that copy still there. So what I do is 
I just throw it away. Now I'm back to where I started, right? Go get your actions palette again and hit stop. You're done. You only have to write that action one single time because in the future you'll be able to create a flattened image that's ready to save in one keystroke. Okay, let's do that in fact. Let's go ahead and close this. Let's close the flattened image and let's pretend that all never happened, okay? All right, so here we are. We were working. We dropped our black and white image. We put our three images in. I have all these layers all stacked and everything ready to go. But I want to create a flattened image to go ahead and put in the book or to go ahead and send, use as a proof. So my keyboard shortcut was Shift Option Command, if I remember right. Shift Option Command and F12. I hit that. Watch what happens. Boom. Just that fast. It did it. Look at that. It built me a... It built me. I like the English. It built, it created a flattened image. I'm ready to save it as Smith Wedding or Smithy Smith Wedding. I can save it as a JPEG because it is flattened and ready to go. Smith Wedding 1. I close that and my template is ready to go. It's completely untouched. And that's the beauty of using that action. You hit one little key and you're there. Now, that's it for this particular technique, but I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to kind of use parts of this in something else later, so I'm not going to... I'm going to actually let's save this file. Let's go ahead and save this as um, Stack Template 2, so I can come back to this later if I need it in another part of the DVD.